Hey everybody, you're watching 5 Minute Web Dev, and this is another episode in our series, 5 Minute CSS. All right guys, so this tutorial is about responsive background images, and more specifically, responsive background image heights. Actually, because of the nature of background images, this applies to almost all elements that aren't inline. But background images is where I tend to encounter the issue, so that's where I'm going to focus. Now, this is an issue I've run into in the past, and I've run into recently, and I've seen a lot of people revert to JavaScript and event listeners and stuff to try and solve it, but there's actually a really simple CSS solution for it, so I wanted to share it with you. As you can see, my markup is pretty simple. I have a container, and within that container is an element that will have my background image. In the CSS, my container has a max width of 960 pixels and it's centered. And my background image element has a background image set on it along with some other various background properties. Now, if I open this page, you'll see that there's nothing there because the background image element doesn't uh, has no sizing properties on it and there's no content and thus there's nothing to see. Now, let me explain the issue at hand. Responsive width is pretty simple. If I set an element to have a 100% width, its width will always be equal to that of its parent's content box. So in this case, the background image will be a maximum of 960 pixels and it will shrink along with its container. Now, if I open up the page now, you'll see that our background image element has a width, but there's no height, so you still can't see anything. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need for this trick is the aspect ratio of our image as a percentage. Now we can get this by dividing our height, in our case 1008, by our width, in our case 2400. That will get us 0.42 or 42%. Now, the first thing we might try to make this height responsive is to use the aspect ratio percentage on our height property. But as you can see here, that doesn't work. Why? Because a percentage value for height requires the parent to have an explicit height value. In our case, our parent doesn't have one, so that's not gonna work. Okay, so the next thing we might try is a fixed pixel height. We can take our 42% and multiply it by 960, or our max width, and we'll get 403.2 pixels for our height. Now, if I refresh the page, we can see the image. It looks good, but unfortunately, this will only work if the width is 960 pixels. As I start to shrink it with background size contain, there's a bunch of white space around the image that we don't want. If I switch to background size cover, I refresh and begin to shrink the page, the image begins to get cut off. This happens because the height of the background image element isn't responsive, it's fixed in both cases. So what's the answer then? Funny enough, the answer doesn't lie in height at all. It lies in padding. Why? Because the percentage value for padding is based off of the parent element's width. And because our element has a width of 100% of its parent, our padding top will always be 42% of our element's width. And we know from our understanding of the box model, check that video out if you need a refresher, that padding top or bottom will add to the height of our element, which is exactly what we want. So this trick basically utilizes the box model's behavior to create a responsive height for our element using padding. So now if I refresh, you can see that the picture looks great even as we shrink it. It doesn't get cut off, and if I switch back to the background, si to background size contain, there is no extra white space. So the solution to responsive height for background images and elements doesn't really have anything to do with height. It's all about padding. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching 5 Minute Web Dev. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment letting me know what other topics you'd like me to cover in the future. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time.